What we're going to be going over in this problem is where we're going to be looking at the retrospective accounting change for inventory methods. And the question we're going to have to answer is how to calculate the change effect here on retained earnings. And for example, we're going to change from the FIFO inventory method here to the average cost inventory method. And for example here, the company has used the FIFO inventory method here since year X1, but they're going to change over to the average cost inventory method here at the beginning of year X7. And this is what we're given here in the problem. We're going to be given these six years here of uh, net income here, looking at FIFO here versus the average cost. Now, for the average cost, uh, the average cost net income here has been retrospectively recalculated for us. So that's what we're given here. And these uh, amounts here that we have for net income uh, for each, the FIFO versus the average cost, those are year end amounts. And the other thing we're given in this problem here is the retained earnings balance uh, for the FIFO inventory method. We've been using the FIFO inventory method for the past six years here. So we know what the retained earning balance would be based on this FIFO, using the FIFO inventory method. But what we have to do here is we have to uh, restate these financial statements or we have to recalculate our retained earnings as if we would convert it over to the average cost method here as of year X, uh, the end of, year, well, for year X1 here and up through year X6. So this is our question that we have to answer here, this retained earning balance. We're going to really be looking at the retained earning balance at the end of, for the beginning of year X7 when we make this conversion, but we'll do, uh, we'll look at how we'd make our, uh, con how, how we uh, uh, re our retrospectively go back here and uh, restate our retained earnings or recalculate our retained earnings. Okay, so let's go over here and let's look at what's going on here. Uh, okay, our net income here, year X1. Uh, what we would have here for the FIFO inventory method, let's just say it's 200. This is actually in thousands of dollars, so it would be like 200,000 here. Uh, and our average cost that we recalculated here was 184,000. So what you're doing here in this uh, problem here, you have to compare your FIFO uh, net income here to the average cost net income here. So let's look at what's going on here for FIFO. We had 200,000. Now, when we convert it over to the average cost, it's now down to 184,000. So we had a reduction here of 16,000 in our uh, net income for the for the for the use for this first year end here X1. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look at what the cumulative effect is over these six years here. So we know what we're going to have in the beginning of year X7 here when we make this conversion. Okay, so. We've taken care of our first year here. Now we go to the next year. Same thing. Just make our comparison in um, FIFO net income. We had 140,000. Uh, if we had used the average cost method, we'd only have 130,000. So again, the difference is uh, negative 10,000 here. So again, reduced our net income here by 10,000. So here's where the cumulative effect comes in. We start out with what we had here, uh, that negative 16,000 or reduction of 16,000 here at the end of year X1. Now we add to it another 10,000, negative 10,000 here at the year of end, a year X, end of year X2. So now a cumulative effect here at the end of year X2 is now 26 or 26,000. Okay, so we just continue on doing that here for the next uh, following years here. So for year X3, again, 580,000 versus average cost 160,000. So we have another reduction here in net income by 20,000. Okay, so adding that to our previous cumulative amount here, 26,000, we now come up with 46,000 uh, as a cumulative effect or the reduction here in our net income. Okay, and then going on here, let's look at this year X4. Well, we FIFO, we had 240,000. Now our net income increases here to 260,000 here for average cost. So that will represents a difference here, an increase of 20,000. So a cumulative effect, well, we had a negative 46,000 here at the end of year X3, but now year X4, we have an increase here, 20,000. So now our cumulative effect is reduced here down to 26,000. Simply the 46,000 less our increase here of 20,000 at the end of year X4. So end of year X4, cumulative effect here is 26,000. Now if we use move to year X5, we add FIFO 600,000. Again, average cost, 
586,000, so we have a reduction here of 14,000 uh, average by using the average cost here. Uh, cumulative effect, add that to the 26,000 here at the end of year X4, so end of year X5, we're sitting at 40,000. And then year X6, here's a case where we had an increase in our uh, net income uh, by using the average cost method. 610,000 for FIFO, average cost 620,000. So increase of 10,000 here uh, for year X, end of year X6. Uh, so the cumulative effect is we had a 40,000 here in the end of year X5, uh, negative 40,000. We have the positive difference here of 10,000. So the difference gives us, or the cumulative effect is now a negative 30,000 here. So by using the average cost method over these six years, we have a negative 30,000 going, a cumulative effect here going to our, uh, to our net income here. So that's what's gonna be, this, this net income amount here is gonna be closed to the retained earnings. And we're gonna look at how we adjust our retained earnings using this cumulative effect here. So here's what we have. Here's what we're gonna be looking at. Here's the retained earnings balance using our FIFO. We have to convert that over to uh, adjust it for the average cost method over the, uh, retrospectively over these six years here to get to our end, our beginning of the year X7. Okay, so here's what I have. I have this laid out in the T account forms here. So again, our retained earnings, that's part of equity here. And I have it shown as reported here for the FIFO uh, inventory method here, again, on our balance sheet here. So what we have is these uh, six years here, year X1 through year X6. So what I've done here, you just taken, just looking at our comparison here, when we have to convert our retained earnings here, FIFO over to the return earnings for the average cost here. So this is what we do. Um, we just take our calculations that we made up above here. So our retained earnings for those six years here using FIFO, that simply comes off our retained earning balance here that we were given here or what we were working with up through year six here using this FIFO inventory method. So this say our retained earnings, just transfer them down here. Year X1, we started out with 200,000. And then if you look at through the uh, our years here, year X6, we ended up with $1,560 here, uh, or 1,560,000 here in a retained earning balance under the FIFO inventory method. So that's these are year end amounts here that we're showing. Now, to convert over to our retained earnings as the av uh, adjustment here, this would be our average cost retained earnings again. Uh, simply take that cumulative effect that we had up here. Whatever our cumulative effect is, that would go and would be adjust our retained earnings, our FIFO amount, and that cumulative effect adjusting adjusting it against our FIFO amount is going to give us a return earnings here for our average cost method. So I'll be taking it off the list here. I'm just showing the numbers. A cumulative effect here, year X1, we had at 16 or 16,000. And then each of those years up to year X6, we're sitting at 30,000 here. So all we do is just take and make our comparison. I'm showing it here as a reduction to our retained earnings because they were a negative amount here uh, based on that cumulative amount. So I'm just showing it as a debit, debit amount here against the retained earnings for to determine our average cost. So what we would do, we take that 200,000 here credit for year X1 sitting as reported for our FIFO and then reduce it by that cumulative effect here for year X1 of 16,000. So retained earnings for the average cost method here would be 184,000. And just proceed on down through the list here, or through our numbers here. Year X2, we were sitting a retained earnings here for uh, uh, the FIFO method at 320,000. Again, the cumulative effect for at the end of year X2 was 26,000. So the reduce 320,000 by 26,000, we're gonna get return earnings average cost at 294,000. So that's what you do. Just proceed on down the list here. Just remember you are, because we had the, we, what we do is we just take and we net out our cumulative effect here from our reported FIFO uh, retained earnings here. And that gives us the adjustment that we have to make to record our retained earnings for the average cost method here. So really what we were doing here is we had to go back and we had to retrospectively adjust our retained earnings here uh, under the FIFO method uh, by looking at 
the uh, uh, the net income that would be flowing in a FIFO versus our average cost method. And we have to make that adjustment here to determine what the retained earnings for our average cost is. So just remember, go out and you have to determine your cumulative effect here uh, throughout those years that we have to go back here to readjust our retained earnings uh, FIFO versus our average cost. And in this case, we had to know what our, and let's go back up here. So in this case, we had to know what our net income was here for using each of these methods. So FIFO, we knew what the net income would be under that because we've been using it for the last six years here. But average cost, we ha not showing it here, but it would have, we would have to gone back and retrospectively adjust that our uh, net income here based on using this average cost method. But knowing after making that retrospective adjustment here, then we were able to compare the average cost method here of net income with the FIFO inventory net income method. And then we were able to determine what the difference was. And then based on that difference that we have for each of those retrospective years that we had to calculate, we could determine what the cumulative effect is. So they just build on each other. So any difference that we have in the prior year here, that would, that would uh, be adjusted to whatever our cumulative effect in the prior year would be here. We have to adjust it for whatever we have effect in the current year here. So that makes the, that determines what the next year's cumulative effect would be. Okay, let's just go down here to our retained earnings uh, a, a T accounts here. And then again, just remember, we had to adjust our FIFO inventory here to the new average cost method and what we really wanted to do is look at the beginning of year x7 so what we would again remember we had to go back over those last six years here to determine what the uh, cumulative effect would be over those six years here and then based on that cumulative effect we had to adjust our FIFO retained earnings to determine what the average cost retained earnings would be. And then just remember here for what we started out with for when we made this conversion here at the beginning of the year X7 here, that was really becomes whatever number, whatever uh, we determined here for the uh, end of year X6 here. In this case, the retained earnings here into year X6 for the average cost method was 1,530,000 and then we were able to, uh, that would be coming the beginning of the year X7s here, uh, retained earnings that we'd be using here, using the average cost method. So just remember here, uh, the retained earnings here uh, uh, for the FIFO method here has to be adjusted using this cumulative change effect here to de determine what the uh, uh, retained earnings would be under our new inventory method that we'd be using here. And that is the average cost. So this represents here our credits to our retained earnings here under the average cost method. That's our FIFO adjusted retained earnings to the average cost. Again, just remember, whatever you have here for your year-end balances in this case, that becomes next year's beginning balance. So uh, end of year X6 here uh, that we had here, uh, 1,530,000 becomes the beginning of year X7 here, uh, again, using this average cost method. So that goes over, our, that's, I guess, a summary of our example.